Welcome back from that break. That's the Roland Garros right there in France. Come Friday, we'll bring you a full dose of what and what uh, has been happening in Roland Garros. And you can be rest assured that the upsets are beginning to come in. All right, let's start from the home front. The Super Eagles players are en route USA for the match between Mexico and Ecuador. And Joel, the good thing is that the MPFR players, let me tag them that way, they were invited to Super Eagles, are also jetting out. Yeah, it's good to know they're also jetting out, but guess what? It's the best players from the MFM that, you know, that will be with the Eagles right there in the US. Now what happens to your team? Because you have weekly games to play. You can't just go to US, yeah, play games, then come back and, you know, rush into the MPFR. So it's a big stand also to the clubs where these players are living. But it's a good one for them. It's a boost on their CV. I'm giving them a new area of, uh, I mean, world football. Let me say that because you're playing against one of the best in the world, you know, by level the world so um a good one for them a good one for nigeria also but you believe it's a reverse business the last time was four nil so i just hope they get it right this time now now, now getting right is never my problem we, we we need to start building up the super eagles yeah. we didn't qualify for the afcon mm -hmm. um um for the world cup i beg your pardon yeah. and that's a very big blow in all ramification now with a group of young men you're sending out some players had withdrawn uh okoye did yeah, sure, he gave his reason uh, what will you be expecting considering the fact that these are a group of young men going out to really put their talent into test yeah I mean, it's a fresh new ground it's a fresh ground for um, a lot of players especially try the home base players and also it's a big task for the coach um the person of uh, uh salis yusuf um uh, just Passero won't be there. Probably I'll be watching from the stand somewhere. But this is a team you're coming in to um, build a team. Now, if the, any home base player performs well, he might be part of the Super Eagles, even if we have lots of players abroad. But now it is time we have to tell our player, look, you have to be serious with our teams. If you play very well, you can edge out the professional players. Mm. It has to do with exposure, what you can bring in. Because it gets to a point, it is your individual input that puts you where you are. So yeah. what I'm expecting to see is a tight game. It might not be up to 4 0 like the last time, but I expect them, I expect the Eagles to give um, the Mexicans a run for their money. What do you think? Um, the inclusion of the home base players, especially from the league, what impact do you think it will create on the league? Um, it's, it's simple. Yeah, it only tells you it is time you're looking at players in the league. And also, um, players should give their best. At the same time, uh, I mean, it's a matter of exposure. Exposure to the league. And it, it tells you, oh, no, look, we have to sign the best players in our team. Mm -hmm. If we want to have our players in the national team. Because... It has to be on your CV. I was playing for, you know, uh, AIM, but then I get invited to the national team. So it's kudos to AIM, but if you have my great player that will play for the national team. Mm. All right. Kudos to all the players that are en route to um, U.S. to play the game between Mexico and Ecuador. The first game is between Mexico, and the second one will be against Ecuador. The good thing is that we're building up and we're looking at young players, young talents, who have what it takes, the dexterity to represent this great country called Nigeria. We'll be on top. We'll be looking at what really that game has to do and the impact to bring to the league, but not just that. Is this a new time to start discovering the homegrown players to fill uh, those holes right there within the Eagles? Let's quickly move into the under 20. It came, it ended, and they did conquer, and the minister has hosted them. But the good news is that the safe hands in that particular team, in person of Nathaniel Nwosu, is among the top 11 of that particular time. So, so good for Natalia Wosu and his team in Abuja, Water FC. It's not the first time Water FC is producing these uh, quality players. Water FC, I remember a friendly match, uh, Bessa Morito, in Steven Keshi. He invited two players from Water FC uh, to be part of the national team, and they did very, very well. So, um, for this young man to be in the team 11, something Nigeria should order for him. At this time, we have to be serious with our goalkeeper, because mm -hmm. over time, We've had issues with goalkeepers and they're not performing well when it comes to major tournament. But this guy has started on a clean note, and I just want to believe continuity. In the I mean, is the name of the game right now. We have to keep this guy. Um, he might have offers in Europe, fine, but there has to be close watch on him because he's one of the best we have on that level. I think uh, from the team we're seeing, Nigerians and uh, Cote d'Ivoire dominated the top 11. Sure. Um, when it comes to youth, youth tournaments, especially when um, under 17, under 20, Nigeria, Mali, Cote d'Ivoire. They are tops for me. So they, they, I'm not surprised about the list. You have a lot of variants there. Mm. Uh, you have um, Malians too and uh, Nigeria. So good for Nigeria. That guy, Daga. Daga is a, a quality player from what both players from what I have seen. So good one for Nigeria and um, what I have seen too. Okay, my, my, my concern when I got this news and read it and made me very happy is that we've had issues yeah. with the goalkeeping department. We've had Zor, Ikbei, uh, Maduka. Is it 
a ray that will be having somebody who will step into that. He's still very young at yes. 20, yes. but he can understudy. Mm -hmm. Just like what we had with Vicente Yam over yeah. time, yeah. he became a gladiator. Do, do, do you see Natalia stepping into that big shoe? It depends. If you because sometimes a lot of these young lads, when when you when you give them you know the big cake to bite, they feel ah, I mean it gets into their head. So. It has to grow in the game. Mm -hmm. Winning another twin doesn't make it the best in the world. It doesn't make it an overcome or doesn't make it a Vincent Ayama. But mm -hmm. you have to start from the grassroots. And he has started from the grassroots. So what is important is keep, I mean, keep being, doing your thing for your team. If you get a pro one team or you get an MPFL team to do, I mean, to do your business, fine, do it. You have to grow. But he has to keep getting the invite so he can mature and, you know, be there for Nigeria when, when we need him. All right. We really wish him the very best. Natalia Lungo. So we hope that he will step into that big shoe. Vincent Ayama dropped that uh, the other three major goalkeepers have not been able to fill in. They've done their best, but it has always been disappointing at the last-minute call when you expect them to put up their A game. I'm not going to mention them like I did earlier, but if it means Natalia Nwosu will be the next big deal. So be it. let's move on. We're coming within the African continent. Chan draws qualifier will come up tomorrow, Thursday, and that means a lot of uh, Salis will be very busy this period mm -hmm. around and f f from the look of things I if you look at it West Africa has been a very strong domineering factor yes. when it comes to uh, the Chan category mm -hmm. in Africa o what's your expectation what are you willing to see ever since the Chan started we've had good outing in the Chan um, if we've not really I think we've won the Chan like once or twice um, we've not really had this um, but I I've always said you take players to a tournament they perform very well or a little bit very well, let me use that word. Now you don't see those players, you don't see the set of those players. It's going to be difficult for Salisu, so I have my reason, because the league has not ended. Mm. How do you pick quality players right now in the league? And you have injury scare, because there are some Nigerian teams that are complaining their players are injured. Now who are you taking to the champ? Some of the players that will be in the Eagles for the friendly games will also be there in the champ. Now also, I have said something, the champ, league, the champ team is a replacement of the Nigerian league, which I believe we are improving over time. The last time we went to Chan, we, have, we, we took third, where you had players like Falaye and Antonio Potu. So yeah. this is the time we have to really prove to Africans that we still can be the best. We, fine, we didn't qualify for the African, it doesn't matter. But this is, it only tells you the level our league has gone when we get to the Chan tournament. Mm -hmm. So I just believe Salisu Yusuf has a lot of job to do, putting the players together and getting somewhere when it comes uh, come Morocco for the Chan. Mm -hmm. for, for, for you, um, Ghana... Cup de Voix, mm -hmm. South Africa, these are top-notch opponents. Uh, will you be expecting to see any one of them in our group and what do you think that could do, uh, considering the fact that we have some young ones within the lad going to the U.S. and the experience will come to be on the team? Uh, what do you think those teams could do when it comes to that rivalry? I don't want to talk about ranking right now, but looking at the team's performance, um, the senior level in the last AFCON, um, wherever that becomes our opponent we shouldn't it shouldn't be a scare for us we have the same quality of players they have they have an active league, league we have an active league remember we have a league where you have Ghanaian players Ivorian players coming to sign in our league so we always play the big boy role when it comes to football um, on this level on the chance so I, I it shouldn't be a scare for Nigeria even if you have the Ghanaians or the Ivorians in your group but what is important is going out there showing the quality you have because we also remember there are scouts coming to that tournament to you know fish players and uh, take players to Europe so yeah. is a place is a platform where you have to show the best you know um quality you have then you can apply your trade somewhere better in europe all right so we're really wishing uh, the organizers of chan the very best as they uh, group the teams the way it's supposed to go another sad news that came up just some couple of 48 hours ago was that zimbabwe and kenya were thrown out uh from the qualifiers qualifiers Anyway, um, I wasn't surprised when I saw that news. This is Africa, where you don't have uh, professional professionalism when it comes to administration of football. It has to do with government interference in sports, like what we're seeing in basketball in Nigeria. We have a situation where with Decree 101, what is Decree 101 coming in to do? Government shouldn't interfere in sport. But at the Kenyans and the Zimbabweans, Probably they don't have corporate bodies coming in to you know, assist them when it comes to sport development and especially football. So they got the hammer, so so start for them. I, I just hope they pick up from where, I mean, from where they stop. And um, probably the government should intervene and do something. But it's so sad they had the hammer this, this, this time around. So they're not going to be there for the qualifiers. They won't be there for, I mean, the call, um, Cup of Nations in I Ivory Coast. But, but, but do you think it has to do with administrative lacuna? Yes, definitely, because um, you're not doing your job properly. Part of your job is scouting for corporate bodies 
to come in and you know involve in sport individuals that know what this business of sport is all about especially football like, like what we have in nigeria a few corporate bodies coming in to you know uh, put their hands in it so it means the people on the part of the administration they're not doing the job they're supposed to be done because with your office and your level you can walk into any office and tell look come and put your money in, uh, in my sport and get the best when it comes to advertisement and all that so probably they're not doing it properly but but but, but Joel, let's let's be sincere with ourselves um at times FIFA plays ostrich. We talk about government interference because yeah. uh, one of the issues affecting Zimbabwe and Kenya is government interference yeah. in mm -hmm. uh, management of football. Mm -hmm. But it, can you really take away government interference from African football? That's why I said this is Africa. You can. FIFA has to assist us in doing that also. Probably there has to be. Now, yes, you can't take away government um, I mean interference. Probably there has to be soft landing for corporate bodies. Mm. There has to be policies that will make them come. So it, 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 should, it should be a win-win between the federal government and the administrators when it comes to football. Mm. There are policies that you give a company and say, fine, you can put in a million and probably get like two million at the end of the day. So I think, yeah, you can't take of government intervention. That's 100%. It could be 10%. Probably FIFA has to bend the rules for those uh, smaller countries. You have a lot of countries like Lesotho, Namibia. Yeah. So there has to be government interference to some certain level. So probably FIFA should change, bend the rules a little bit to favor those smaller countries. Mm -hmm. All right. We'll see how it goes. It's quite sad that uh, Zimbabwe and Kenya won't be part of the teams that would be in Cote d'Ivoire for the AFCON 2023. We'll be going on this quick break. When we come back, so much more to talk in the world of sport writers and sport matters. We'll be looking at basketball, table tennis, and the big one, athletics. We'll be right back. You're now